your show, baby. Ready, set, go. Ready, set, go. Good afternoon. It's Robert and Julia Miller with the Jay Patel Group and Rethink Real Estate with another exciting real estate update. And thrilling. And thrilling. That's right. Uh, please like and subscribe so we can continue to grow our viewership. Wherever that little pop up, wherever I decide to put that little pop up. So we are on to episode 110? 110, yes. Fantastic. On this fine February day. So we'll do a little humor, a little uh, history. We'll quickly run through the news that's happened this week, um, a couple of special reports. Then we will do some uh, rates for this week, uh, where we're at on inventory. We'll wrap it up. Yeah, yeah, just a quick, it's actually just a quick special report, right? As far mm -hmm. as the commercial report. That well, we I want to talk about that jobs report that came out. Oh, that yes. Was, that was pretty interesting. Okay. That'll probably be the thing we spend a little bit of time on, but I'll try All to be right. brief. All right. You got a joke All for right. us? All right. Yeah. All right. Lay when on something us. good happens, travel to celebrate. I agree. When something bad happens, travel to forget. That's right. Condolence travel. If nothing happens, travel to make something happen. I say travel. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> Love it. All right. Uh, how about you? Make M us laugh. Magma. Rock before it was cool. <laughs> yeah. Check, okay. Check there. Rock before it was cool. Yeah, yeah. You got uh, it? I got it. Yeah. Okay, so Mag make sure. Get it more from a geological standpoint than a truck <laughs> standpoint. But. All right, moving on. Uh, this week in history, in 1974, the crew of the Skylab space station returns to Earth February 8th after 84 days. Okay. And that little bitty tin can. So. You, you like those space... Uh, Voyager updates, don't you? Yeah, I do. I do. The, lab, the final frontier, as <laughs> Captain Kirk said. 1940, the Disney film Pinocchio premieres February 7th Pinocchio. in New York City. Who knew Pinocchio was that old? Whew. Yep, he's getting up there near. A little wooden boy. 1881, Phoenix, Arizona is incorporated on February 5th. And February 14th, we celebrate our statehood. We became a state in 1912. 1912. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was just 10, 11 short years ago that we celebrated our... I remember all the special uh, signage and everything. Yeah. It was great. Yeah, our 100th anniversary, our centennial. So. All right, moving on to a little bit of uh, housing news. All right, um, we're jumping uh, right we are, Hang on to your hats. Some folks are optimistic. We're seeing a little bit of market thaw. Uh, average mortgage rates are down nearly a point from the 20-year highs reached in November 2022, and I do have a little more positive rate news. Okay. Um, some buyers are starting to return to the housing market, mm -hmm. so that's uh, usually housing is a good indicator uh, for the economy, so yeah, that's overall week, good news. Last week about the uh, millennials having a more positive um, yes. outlook on buying again and um, some of the things that they're doing to adjust um, some of their buying um, because affordability is still kind of out there. So you're having to make some... It's getting better. You know, I some revisions like, and sacrifices to right. get into housing. But yeah. they're realizing that that's what it is, and they'll, they'll do it. They're rolling with it. Yeah. Thank you, millennials. <laughs> okay, a little economic news. Uh, this is a little bothersome, but not totally unexpected because of the pandemic. Um, credit card debt. Total credit card debt reached a record $930.6 in the fourth quarter of 2022. That's an 18.5% spike from a year earlier. Mm -hmm. um, the average balance rose to $5,805. So I know we're a little bit in a recession, so there's probably more folks kind of relying on credit to and get that's, by. And yeah, the average credit card annual percentage rate is it's actually over 20 percent i believe yeah that's conservative that's isn't very it? conservative um yeah. because that when every time the feds do their little hike their base hike rates it directly affects that rate 
it that rate will go up every time. Right, exactly. Whereas our interest rates don't mortgage directly rates get, different. Yeah, yeah they don't absolutely. directly get affected by that. So at any rate, be careful with that credit card spending. It will hurt you long run, yeah, especially if you plan fast. to buy a house in the near future, you're going to need to get rid of that because that's part of your debt to income ratio. That's a good point. Yes. yes. Debt to income so. ratio. All right. So as expected, um, the Fed did uh, increase the benchmark rate mm -hmm. uh, by 0 0.25 yep. or 25 basis points. That mm -hmm. was totally expected. Yep. And whenever they do these rate increases, the probably the more important thing that affects the market and what people want to hear is what Jerome Powell says after the announcement. The hope was that with the positive results we're seeing in some cooling of the economy that we may mm -hmm. see only one more rate hike, but unfortunately right. he did not do that. Um, hoping the, the hike only one more time, but now it appears we could expect to see a hike in March, May, and possibly even June. So that wasn't um, the news yeah. that uh, a lot he of people were hoping and for. Saw but his shadow. So six more weeks of rate uh, hikes. Maybe a little more than six <laughs> weeks. You're right. So we shall yeah. see. Let's you know, see he what. Is, uh, he's not always a ray of sunshine. Can I just say that? You know, that? He, he's taken it the bull by the horns is, he is, is the best way to explain it. And it he's is. just not going to yeah. back down until mission is accomplished mm -hmm. and they're closer to the 2% okay. inflation rate, what they want. Which... It's working. It's slow and it's a little agonizing right. and it's a bitter pill as we talked about last week. Yeah. So Now one of the most shocking news reports um, this week or into last week, um, January job growth it was not actually as strong as it appeared. It came out with 517,000 jobs created. Yeah. We're and like, they were only expecting about 106. Yeah. So they beat it by like five times. Yeah. Which seems like what happened? Impossible. So yeah. let's read between the lines a little bit okay. here. Okay. There are two reports within the job report, and there's a fundamental difference between them. The business yeah. survey is where the headline job number comes from, and it's based predominantly on modeling and estimations. Okay. okay. The household survey, where the unemployment rate comes from, is derived by calling households to see if they are employed. Mm. Okay. Fairly okay. simple. The household survey has its own job creation component and it shows that there were 894,000 new jobs created last month. Talk Whoa. about out of whack compared <laughs> to the on? 106 that they expected. So now we're talking eight times more than yeah. was estimated. What is going on? What is going on? Okay. <laughs> it's important to note that there were big adjustments to how the data was calculated in January's mm. new seasonal factors, new benchmarks, mm. and new population estimates and controls were implemented. Oops. Okay. So if we remove just the population control adjustment that they just introduced in January, the number of job creations in the household survey would have only have been 84,000 not 894,000. Yeah, so, <laughs> wow. Wow. Um, in other words, the way and the calculations the jobs data is compiled was just changed in January. It seems very likely that this new algorithm has some flaws in it and most investors aren't very open to the idea that there were actually 517,000 We've got some kinks to work out rated. with that model. So yeah. <laughs> I won't be surprised I won't be wow. surprised at all if they come out with a revised I estimate after they work yes, on that algorithm because that's, need to that's be revised. just you can't miss the mark by that much. Yeah. Um probably a more realistic um uh, look at this is what you get from um ADP the automatic data processing system. Mm -hmm. And they came out, uh, private payrolls came in much lower than expected last month as 
the ADP employment report showed that there were just 106,000 jobs created oh, okay. in January, which is okay. much closer to what Somewhere they were predicting. 86 or whatever you said, and then 106. 106. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, just 106 jobs were created. Yeah, okay. Um, the construction sector accounted for 24,000 jobs lost. Lost. Uh, and you're kind of arguing this took me by that a little bit. Yeah. maybe we're not seeing that in Arizona, but right. maybe other parts of the country. Well, as I look around, I see home builders, and, and that construction um, slowdown is from home builders, they're saying. Um, as I look around, I, there's, wow, lots of houses even being started, you know, foundations being poured, things like this. And so when I see that number, I don't actually see it. Mm -hmm. But what we need to realize, what I need to do is step back and say, okay, we're talking about new housing permits pulled and requested. That's true, too. So, and this is also a national number. Yeah, it's a national number. So we're seeing construction everywhere here Arizona's, in the valley, yeah. but that doesn't necessarily mean in yeah, the we're Midwest heading shoulders or other above places. Some of the other places um, as far as building goes. Exactly. And again, just because I'm seeing building starts, um, home build start, doesn't mean those are new permits. Those are permits pulled months ago. So. Absolutely. All right. Well, we don't really have a commercial update. I apologize. I've, I failed. Uh, I would have forgotten about it anyway, failed. so that's okay. We'll get <laughs> you a, a I commercial will say, break next week. I did get that um, Desert Oasis video out, so that is out. Um, I think I link, linked it last week as well, but if you haven't seen that, go back and watch that. Okay, thank Here's you very much. Marshall break. A little closer to home here, uh, an article in the Peoria Independent this week. Huh. Much of the Vistancia commercial core still remains vacant, but has seen more permitting <laughs> activity lately, signaling that construction could be near. Could be near. Most importantly, the 123,000 square foot Fry's Marketplace, wow. planned as the anchor of Estancia's commercial core, has seen some significant wow. movement in the permitting process. That is big. Fry's site plan, generally speaking, a set of drawings that allow for building to commence, was approved January 11th. Woohoo! So we should start seeing right. uh, some earth moving here before too long. Um, <laughs> Part of this was contingent on final approval of the associated Fry's gas station mm. conditional use permit that was approved December 8th. The gas station use. will be located on an eight acre pad within, 20, uh, within the 20 acre grocery anchored commercial center. What is, I wonder what conditional use means for the <clears throat> gas station. I'm not sure, maybe some restrictions on what they could yeah, I mean, we already have a gas station over there, but that's there certainly is demand. I'm not yeah. saying that there's not. Um, so, I, I don't know. I mean, a lot of gas stations sell alcohol. Oh, they may not, maybe that. Yeah, it maybe it's alcohol. Or, yeah, yeah, I wouldn't think that they would sell alcohol because there's like a liquor permit kind of thing and how close And you got the fries right there. Know, if you're going to buy liquor, you just go in the fries. Right. So I would think. Yeah. I'm not sure what it involves. I don't know. Anyway, the wheels are turning. Yep. <laughs> All right. Let's move on. Rates, uh, again, basically flat, but they did tick down just they a little bit. Down a little the bit. 30-year was at 6.15. It comes in today at 6.066. Okay. We'll take it. Yeah. Boy, I'd love to report 5.9, you know. Mm -hmm. Maybe the next few weeks we'll be able to do that. Yeah. 15 year uh, drop from 5.31 to 5.363. Actually went up just a hair, just, didn't it? Uh, yeah, just, just a hair, yeah. Skosh, barely moved. The VA actually mm -hmm. did drop 5.93 and it dropped to 5.60. Woohoo! All right, moving on to inventory. Again, it dropped just slightly, a couple hundred. Uh, we went from 15,753. We're down now to 15,525 active homes mm -hmm. on the market. Okay. That's valley wide. Yep. A little closer to home, Peoria was basically flat. They're at 518 available homes, and mm -hmm. Surprise is sitting at 751 available homes. Wow. A little closer to home, Trilogy at Vistancia has 50 homes available. 
Price range is $480,000, the most affordable, $1,400,000 tops the list. And days on market is sitting at 92, so mm -hmm. we're just a little over three months wow. on average to sell a home. Okay. Vistancia Village ticked up to 61 active listings, 351,000 the most affordable, 999,900 is the most affordable resale home. Okay. 98 days on market, so that continues to tick up just a little bit. Mm -hmm. Blackstone Country Club uh, moved down. They went from 10 wow, active down to 7, so a lot of activity wow. out of Blackstone Country Club. Oh, Blackstone. Most affordable, uh, 575000 and 1550000 tops the list. Wow. And days on market, considering that's a luxury community, 107 days on market. It's only slightly more than we are in the exactly, village. Exactly, not so. bad at all. Not bad. Cordobella sitting <laughs> at 30 homes available, 399,900 is the most affordable, 889,900 tops the list, and they are at also 107 days on market. Okay. Sun City Grand, a very healthy uh, inventory, 152 homes available, 288,000 is the most affordable, 1,195,000 tops the list. Are we finally going to have a million dollar sale in Sun City Maybe, Grand? Maybe. We'll keep bumping up against it. I thought we've had one. I think it ended up having to reduce the price oh. just under, and I, I'll have to research it and a little more. And it's the Grand. I'm sorry, the, the Grand. grand. It's going to take me a while to get used to that. Soon we're going to be calling Sun City West the West. Ooh. I like it. I like it. I like it. <laughs> um, they're down at 73 days on market, so okay. uh, uh, homes are turning a little faster in yeah. the grand. Um, Sun City West uh, uh, still at 192 homes, um, 205,000 the most affordable, 849,000 tops the list. Finally, Westbrook Village, they ticked up to 44 active listings, 219500 the most affordable, 569000 the most expensive, and they're sitting at 70 days on market. So now Westbrook Village, 219.5, is that one of those uh, little patio it's homes? It's a one bedroom, one bath, I think it's like 890 square feet. It's a cute so, little bungalow. Cute little bungalow, yeah. I put I wonder what their buy-in fees are. I, I It's been a while since we sold over um, there. I just did a quick look. I didn't check buy-in fees, but what I did look at is what you're going to pay um, per month for your HOA. Yes. Because okay. It, it, uh, you share that. It was in bumping up against four hundred dollars a month for that's that for that all. least that expensive that least expensive home. Right. And it. That's not it's bad basically all. like living in a condo community, right. you know, where you're going to have yeah, everything the paid for. Pool, a lot of times, yeah, you're going to have exterior maintenance. To some no degree. landscaping, all your pest yeah. control, uh, all your amenities. You don't have a yard. You usually have like a little patio. Right. Yeah. So. Um, interesting. Okay. Yeah. So no days on market for the West. Well, I didn't. I haven't been pulling that because. Um, Portabella is actually in Sun City ah, West. Yes, it is. So it skews that number ah, because that gets double counted into yes. that. So I've been passing on the Sun City West days well, on market, but it's been running um, okay. similar to the Cordobella, about a, about 107 okay. or so. Okay, interesting. Okay. Yeah. Um, Derailed. Yeah, thanks. You <laughs> rolled me. Okay, finally, um, a little closer to home, most recent activity. Trilogy at Vistancia sold last 30 days. We're at six units. Okay. Those are all resale homes. Okay. Uh, Trilogy at Vistancia under contract. There are 15, so mm -hmm. activity has picked up a little bit. And one of those is new construction. Vistancia Village sold in the last 30 days five homes, oh. so a little bit slow. Okay, slow. However, and this is grain of salt there are uh, 23 homes under contract okay however 10 of those are new construction so we're really looking at about 13 homes under contract in the village right now so I pulled a couple things I, I pulled a uh, seller's report this morning as we were kind of going through that class brushing up on some skills and um, it showed seller's market up here in Vistancia and if you've got 23 under contract and you've got 61 sitting there, 
that's three months. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's technically a seller's market. Um, but that's still a pretty good inventory to, to choose from for the most yes, part. Yes, buyers. So. You have plenty of inventory. Mm -hmm. so. And then two other things, uh, two things for next week. We will have the Cromford Report. That is on February uh, 12th is when we attend the call. And then so the 13th, I believe, is that Tuesday, next Tuesday. Uh, so that's when we usually record our videos. Uh, so we'll have that information for you. And then we'll also have some information on a program we've talked about a little bit before. It's a program that we have found that's out there that will help you fix up your home if you need to, to get it on the market. They actually lend you money if you need money to get your home ready to be on the market. Maybe you need to replace flooring, you know, um, take out some old carpet, put in new, have that done. They actually give you money to do that, and then um, you can go out and shop. How, do, how does it work from there? You go out and shop for the new home. Yeah, you're essentially to going sell. out, even though you're in a contingent situation, it will put you into a cash buyer situation. Right. So you'll be able to more aggressively pursue the home that you want to buy, Right. make your move, and then, and then sell your home. Then sell your home, and you have six months of payments covered. Yeah. Um, so that you're not paying a double mortgage and a uh, brilliant program. get your home listed and get it sold. Yeah, so. it's a program we're really excited about. So we'll tell you more about that next week. If you have interest in it before then, definitely call or email us. Our information's at the end and I'll put it here at the bottom as well. Um, but yeah, Cromford Report, we haven't done it in about a month. So yeah, we're due. I think they're going to be less frequent as they were. I think they were almost every week before. Um, and I think Tina Tambier just kind of scaled it back a little bit. Right. So. Once a month. It Once a month is plenty. It's plenty. It's plenty. Yeah, for yeah. us anyway. And then we have the stat report that we do the, uh, the next yeah, time. Yeah, do that so. once a month. Do the conference report once a month. And yeah. Yeah. So that's it. That's all I have for reminders for next week. All right. Well, thank you for tuning in. And uh, everybody have a blessed week. And we will talk to you again next week. Talk Take care. Soon.